with a hookup on music featuring your main man, Tony the Sugar Baggy. Hello, everybody. It's me, Tony the Sugar Baggy. How are you doing tonight? I'm glad to be here. I'm glad on this Wednesday, a couple days ago, celebrated a birthday. Um, <clears throat> glad to celebrate with you guys here tonight. Episode 70. 70 episodes. That's, to me, quite the feat. I remember the very first one like it was yesterday. And to say, hey, we're all the way to 70. Very, very, very awesome. Um, it is also very beautiful outside and a uh, beautiful day. So let's rock out on some music. Last week, great, great time we had here on the show. We had Sean out of Philadelphia coming on down, talking the goods. Um, we talked lots of awesomeness, um, and this week we got lots of cool stuff planned. Let's get started. Uh, somebody, uh, a good buddy of mine, uh, Andrew, he sent me this, this awesome, awesome video of a concert he was at, um, where the, uh, there was some awesome action. And generally at these concerts here at, uh, Hook Up On Music, we want all of the awesome action and we like it to be recorded. And that's, uh, well... What's awesome is that uh, this was from a show with Architects of Mice and Men and While She Sleeps. Here's a little bit of what I'm talking about here. If you're listening in, what you heard was awesome rocking, but there was a gentleman in the balcony at the Riv, and he just dove right into the crowd, and they caught him, and everybody was safe. And uh, that's generally what we like here at the Hookup on Music is when you're safe and you're doing awesome stuff. And just cool to see people taking that kind of risk still in, in, in the music. And uh, definitely, definitely awesome. Just a couple couple days ago, too, within the last week, uh, a little band that's been kind of blowing up a little bit uh, from London, England. They're called Sleep Token. Okay, you may or you may not be familiar with this band, but uh, they roll into town. Um, not that, uh, you know, not that shabby because a lot of people were excited about this. And we were uh, we were lucky to uh, be able to, what's the word I'm looking at here, um, get onto the scene and see what kind of, uh, what kind of awesomeness was there. And uh, we got some good footage here that was uh, sent in by another awesomeness. Uh, let's check it out here. Uh, that's a little bit of the Sleep Token show that was at the Salt Shed. Um, thank you very much, my good man, um, Skiles Viking, for sending that in. Always out on the scene and always checking out really, really, really good, good shows and ones that we're not able to get out to and this one was uh, looked like it was a really, really good one. Um, their last album, Take Me Back to Eden, um, first off, they're a band who is anonymous. We do not know who uh, the artists are. We just know their names are Vessel, and there's someone named Two, and S-T-E, Carrie masters this whole production, and Carl Brown is the producer. But uh, Vessel just says he does the vocals, the guitar, the bass, the keyboards, and the synthesizers. The, this gentleman seems to put quite, quite a lot into uh, his music. And, um, you know, the show itself, uh, very, very big and visual. If you're into uh, what I would deem to be awesome visuals, they seem to uh, definitely um, have that. So, you know, going back to the two shows that they played at uh, the, um, what's that called? At the Salt Shed. It looks like, uh, well, both shows didn't have any... Um, was there wasn't any variation between um, either one, um, which is which is cool because I could imagine that these guys are doing something called a uh, what's that? Uh, it, it, generally, you put together a set list and you try to uh, stick with it, and um, definitely um, when you're visually and you got to master the lights and stuff, it's like Kiss. Kiss couldn't really or, or they didn't usually do a, a show. Um, that was anything like, uh, let me put it to you this way, like a Grateful Dead, where every single night you're mis mixing up the sets because of the uh, different kind of pyrotechnics that they used. And, um, well, I'm sure Sleep Token is no different. They got everything planned out just right. Um, 
there are uh in the show which is cool is they do like four songs there's an interlude five songs interlude another four songs interlude um just visually 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 stunning so again um really excited this is uh they were at riot fest uh this past year and now uh, rolling into the salt shed these shows were 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 um what's the word i'm looking for they were they were highly sought after when you see a band uh come together and uh do two shows you say to yourself uh we're lucky because generally a lot of artists they only do one show so to get, these guys went out and they uh what's the word i'm saying they went out and and really wanted to to deliver the goods for the fans for these two shows so um check out sleep token um check out that last album take me back to eden that's good but also go to sundowning from 2019 it's kind of where i uh, kind of got started um Definitely, uh, again, a band that deeper, 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 looking deeper is, is where we're at because this 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 tour that they're on the, at the Salt Shed, they did uh, seven from Take Me Back to Eden, Eden uh, five from their second album, The Place Will Become Your Tomb, which sounds like a lot of jobs I've been at, This Place Will Become Your Tomb. And Sundowning um, is definitely a, a, like I said, uh, a, a, a very remarkable debut. So check check that out. Um, going on from that, and going on from from that 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 coolness. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the Isley Brothers. You know, let's let's we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna move all over the place here tonight. <clears throat> if you have not um, sat down and listened to the Isley Brothers, I'm really um, thinking that it's the time. Um, and what better time than now? I remember um, the time that I listened to the Isley, Isley Brothers. And honestly, if you're looking for the funk, you know, start with 3 plus 3 and 73, okay? Work your way to live it up from 74. The Heat is on from 75. Um, Harvest of the World is 76. Go for Your Guns in 77. Showdown in 78. Winner Takes All in 79. Um, definitely, let's let's start there with Winner Takes All. Um Tracks one through six, I'm going to just put them down and say it's they're just a really, really awesome, 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 great time with amazing lyrics. Um, I want to be with you, parts one and two. You'll notice if you're going through Isley Brothers catalog, there's a lot of parts one and part twos. There's a lot of jamming. There's a lot of, well, just a lot, a lot of coolness that is is being going and working through the magic that is uh, said Isley Brothers. Um, and if you are not familiar with who these Isley brothers are, they are Ronald Isley, O'Kelly Isley Jr., Rudolph Isley, Ernie Isley, Marvin Isley, and their cousin, Chris Jasper, which uh, honestly, a really, really awesome band. And um, if you go through any of these albums that I'm bringing up, you can um, definitely hear what I'm talking about. Uh, back it up a little bit to uh, 1977's Go For The Guns, Go For Your Guns, um, The Pride. Part one and part two, of course, both parts are great. Footsteps in the dark, part one and part two, this is what I'm talking about. Climbing up the ladder, part one and part two, telling me what you need again, part one and part two. Uh, we need more bands doing parts one and part two. Um, Isley Brothers definitely could drop the funk at the drop of their hat, which if you're looking and watching online, was uh, had really, really cool hats. But that being said, a band that just, just really, really, really takes no prisoners um, with their awesomeness. Um, we brought up before on this show, we've talked about the amazing um, guitar work of um, Ernie Isley. Just just really awesome. Um, Ronald, Rudolph, and O'Kelly, they kind of started as a, a three-piece, like singing, doo-wop, and then um, just kind of bursted on the scene and uh, really just started going with, like, this old heart of ha, this old heart of mine, twist and shout, um, lots of lots of good stuff um, in the '60s. So you could go through and and listen to them. And the keyboards of Chris Jasper, really out of this world, um, and out of this world band. I think they're just really really awesome, and they need to just really be taking the time to uh, to uh, listen and, and, and dig a little deeper because. When we're here, we're looking at new artists, old artists, things that we can look a little bit deeper on. And uh, 
here's a little band that I don't know when's the last time you've uh, listened to. Here they are. Material Issue. Wow. Um, another band that uh, kind of floats under the radar from Chicago, Illinois. A power pop trio. Um, songs, a lot of themes, love, and heartbreak. Um, I, what I thought was cool while doing research was uh, a lot of names with, uh, what's the word? Female, um, what, female uh, names. So like songs named after uh, different females, which is cool. I like that a lot. Um, I like the fact that, again, they're a band that kind of, uh, what's the word I'm saying, uh, kind of floats under the the radar. And uh, this song, the one that we listened to on the way in, Valerie Loves Me, just a cool, uh, different, uh, oh, an up and a down. And if you were a fan back in the day uh, of 120 Minutes, you would not uh, be amiss if you say to yourself, I think I've heard that song on there. Um, the guitar um, hook was inspired by David Bowie's John, I'm Only Dancing. Um, while digging deeper into the band, a lot of their songs give off that 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 sound that you're really looking to... Um, we're going to have a good time while listening to some material issue. Um, 11 years they were around, which isn't a long time in today's standards. Um, sadly, why did they end? Sadly, it was because of the passing of James Walter L Ellison, who was the front man, guitar player, um, really, really talented, but like um, everything else, um, you know, he struggled with depression. And, uh, you know, he grew up in Illinois, Glenbard uh, North High School. Uh, with doing research for the show, it seemed to be that um, third album they had a lot of promise. They had a lot of a lot of good reviews. It just did not take off the way that they thought it was going to take off, which again, this is part of the record industry. But uh, unfortunately, um, Jim did not take it well. And um, if you're a fan of the band Tragically Hip, um, there's a song called Escape is, is at Hand for the Traveling Man. I almost messed that up. Practiced that too before. Um, and it was uh, written um, about the relationship between uh, lead singer uh, Gord Downey and Allison, which uh, sadly, when somebody passes away of Allison's talent, you definitely leave behind a mark of people who um, are going to miss you and miss all of the um, awesome and important things that you are a, uh, a part of. Um, so again, um, that being said, Go and uh, check out Material Issue. Check, go through their albums, okay? Because since, um, you know, um, Addison, Illinois, in Ellison's bedroom is kind of where um, the label operated. Um, uh, their own label. It was called Big Block. So, again, um, they were formed in 85, okay? So, you're saying to yourself, well, how old was Jim Ellison when he started this band? Um, he was 19 years old, it looks like. Um, so, again... It's really, again, a sad story, but a, a story where a band just has lots and lots of awesomeness. Um, there was a Facebook feature-length documentary that was put together, which had everybody involved with the unfortunate, sadly, just past Steve Albini and Matt Pinfield and Rick Nielsen and Mike Chapman and other original members of the band. Um, uh, there has been some, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Reunions, if you can call it. I mean, you don't have the original leader, but the other guys have gotten together and, um, they've, uh, performed as material reissue, including, uh, a performance at Taste of Chicago, Summerfest, and they have also played at Lincoln Hall. Um, it was, they also played their last show ever, uh, on a New Year's Eve show at Reggie's Rock Club. Um, but. They still uh, play live, and you know what? When the 20th anniversary of International Pop Overthrow, which has that amazing song that we were talking about earlier, Valerie Loves Me, including Diane and Trouble, and there was a few. Um, definitely, we're checking in deeper. So, again, another really, 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 really sad story. But we are here at um, the hookup to go through all different types of stories. And all different kinds of cool things and new albums, okay? And we are we are really here to talk about another great new album that I've been digging into. And honestly, 
at first, I didn't know how I was going to feel about this based upon the uh, single, but that's Cage the Elephant's new album, Neon Pill. Uh, this is this is five years from um, the Social Cues album in 2019, which I saw them on that tour with Beck, and um, it was Spoon. And uh, let me uh, let me tell you a little bit of a story here, really quick, since I, I have you here. Um, very interesting um, little turn of events that happened t- t- to your host here is um, I'm out in at Deer Creek. Oh, at the time, Verizon um, Amphitheater. I still call it Deer Creek. It's like one of those. The names have changed so many times, but I still call it the original name. But uh, I had a really bad case of, of, of sickness, food poisoning. I'm um, still made my way all the way out there. Um, was able to make it through Spoon and Cage Elephant was so good that they. I, I but man, did I not feel well? And uh, we had to leave during back. So um, it was sad because I was with a friend and uh, we were to be spending this amazing time. Luckily, my wife was there because I don't know what would have happened if she was not. And I didn't drink anything. It was totally just me. And uh, did not work out for me uh, that day. But uh, here we are. It's crazy. It's been that amount of time. But uh, Neon Pill is here. And it's 38 minutes and 35 seconds long. Um, Listening to it. uh, Opening track, Hi-Fi, True Light, awesome. Rainbow, awesome. Neon Pill, this was a song I was, uh, what's the word? It it grew on me. It wasn't one that just popped out at first, but it grew on me. Floating into the sky is really good. Um, Skipping down towards the end. The last three tracks. What I liked about the album is it kind of it sits at this 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 groove. And if you sit down and you listen to it as a whole, you're going to understand what that groove is that I'm talking about. And uh, Cage the Elephant's always been really good with that, and I'm glad that they're still putting together quality albums. Um, you know, this is their um, the the what's the word I'm looking for? This is their a um, six. I, think I've already said that, but it's their sixth studio album. And you, you say to yourself, you know, sixth studio album. Yeah, I mean, the band started in 20, 2006. So if you already think about it, in uh, two years, they're going to be celebrating a 20-year anniversary. So maybe they can get one more album out and one more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, one more b- before the 20 years. But uh, a lot went into this album um, before it was um, able to be brought to fruition. And a lot that being said is that the uh, lead singer, that lead singer, Matt Schultz, who uh, also is brother Brad Schultz, Nick Bockroth, Nathan Minster, Daniel uh, Titterner, and Jared Champion uh, make up the band um, in which is the uh, Cage the Elephant. But that being said, Matt Schultz struggled. We talked earlier a little bit about uh, he struggled with some, some mental health and he needed to take some time, and this is the result of the time that was taken, and honestly, I like that. I like when you take some time, and you come back, and we see what you have, and honestly, uh, John Hill, the producer, who has produced lots and lots and lots of things, he produced their last album, Soul Secures, but he's also produced everything from, you know, Eminem, to Portugal the Man, to Fantagram, to Bleachers, just a lot, wide variety of work, even some Wu-Tang Clan, um, but that being said, um, dig into um, this new album because I, I really don't think you're going to be disappointed with Neon Pill. Um, if you're a fan of the band, um, I think you might be a fan of this album. Again, is it super, super heavy like maybe some of their other work? No. But again, it's a band that, again, has the lead singer has just went through some things and we should be glad that we are uh, rocking out. And I'm glad that we're rocking out. So uh let's let's move forward from from this point to see where we are heading next onto the uh the train of 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 awesomeness and that is the well the one and only al green on the phone three o'clock in the morning talking about okay albert leornis green was born on april 13 1946 um my first introduction to Al Green was, of course, um, a, one of many of his awesome songs, like the one you just heard there, Love and Happiness, uh, Take Me to the River, of course. Um, I think it was that, honestly, it was the Talking Heads cover that made me go and look back at who actually did it. 
um, Let's Stay Together. That's been in so, so, so many different things. Um, he was inducted to the place that we don't really put on a pedestal, but we'll say anyway, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, me personally, at Soldier Field in Chicago, at a Dave Matthews Band concert, I was uh, lucky enough to, uh, what's the word I'm saying, get to see him come out and do Take Me to, to the River with one David Matthews um, band. So that was kind of cool in its own way, if you are a fan of Dave Matthews. But again, awesome, awesome catalog. You're saying to yourself, geez, here, um, how many studio albums does one Al Green have? I mean, he's, I mean, he's still playing. 29. Al Green's got 29 studio albums, which I think is an awesome feat in just in itself. Um, his very last studio album came out in 2008. And who was the producer? Uh, Questlove and James Poyser. But Questlove, Al Green, together, check this album out. Lay it down. It's uh, going to be what I would deem something that you're going to want to listen to because John Legend is even on it. And honestly, I don't talk about John Legend a lot on here, but uh, he's good. He's good. Quest Love, he's doing all the drums. Um, but uh, Catalog of Al Green could be talked about for hours and hours and hours on end. And um, I just have to bring up Al Green. Um, and as we go along on the show, I'm hoping that uh, maybe as we, what's the word I'm looking for? As we, uh, we we travel for, we'll get to dig into some of these Al Green. I mean, we're on episode 70, and we're it feels like we haven't really talked that much about Al Green. But uh, that's 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 what uh, you know. You know, if you back it all the way up to 72's "Let's Stay Together," just that song in general is um, it's a treat. You know, it's a it's a treat to have music like this exist. You know, it's a treat to, to be able to go through this album. And uh, honestly, all of the um, albums of Al Green have, have a couple good songs. So through the last 15 to 20 years, I've spent quite, quite, quite um, the amount of time listening to Al Green. And um, also just thinking about, uh, what's the word I'm saying, the, the a, um, Tina Turner's got a version of it too that is really, 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 really good. A um, lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of different versions of the um, song after doing research on this. Um, Seal, Big Mountain, Roberta Flack, Maroon 5. A um, lot, a lot of different. Even indie rock band Low. Um, I made a mistake, okay, because I told you that I think I heard it with Dave Matthews Band. No, that's not true, because the first time I've ever heard it was in 1994's Pulp Fiction, one of the greatest soundtracks ever. How did that escape me as I started to uh, do research for this and, and start to spill out the information? I, I, I just don't know. But, you know, there it is. It's a great soundtrack. And why is it a great soundtrack? Because it's something like Let's Stay Together. Um, always kind of keep wanting to say Let's Get It On. But uh, that is the great Marvin Gaye, and that is not, not what we are talking about uh, here tonight. Um, really quick, we don't, uh, what's the word I like to say? We don't like to get into a, uh, one thing I always remember, and I, I don't know, really, actually, um, I'm trying to think of how to, again, I'm, I'm running into a, a lot of things of what to uh, say, but there was a, uh, there was this time in, in an unfortunate life of uh, Al Green where he um, unfortunately suffered second degree de burns, second degree burns, because unfortunately um, a girlfriend um, uh, threw a, habata, a pot of hot boiling grit. Um, um, and then very sadly she... Um, Unfortunately, it was no longer around, but w w the reason I'm telling you the story is that this is in 1974, and, and, and honestly, because of this situation, um, he, 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 it took time to recover, but what I like is that to tell you that he, he made so many albums after that, and he rose above, and that's why Al Green is the man, and um, Al Green definitely, um, is is definitely a um definitely definitely awesome and you know 
he, you know, he has, unfortunately, there has been times in his life where it seems to be there has been. And even in that situation, I don't know the full thing. I just know that in a lot of times he became a preacher now, an ordained a preacher. And um, he, you know, he seems to have re revitalized his life. So I think that's just awesome when you make mistakes and you just try to get better from them. So Al Green is awesome. Check out those albums. Um, always cool to talk, Mr. Green. Um, also, if you please get an opportunity, uh, Paramount Plus. The Paramount Plus has been a um, doing a little bit of a, and they're not doing a little bit of it, they just dropped it. Uh, on the 21st, it is a whole documentary on Lollapalooza, starting from the very beginning, working its way through where it starts to starts to flounder a little bit, and all the way to where its current success is. Um, the first episode, very very interesting to see how it all got started with Jane's Addiction. You know, it was a a tour that was supposed to be a goodbye for Jane's Addiction, and then that was it. They were wrapping it up. I was wrapping the band up. What bands could they get? Everyone from Suzy Sue and the Banshees and Nine Inch Nails to uh, Fishbone and Rollins Band. Um, watch this documentary. It talks about the very first Lollapalooza, that, uh, the very first show. Hot. It was hot out there. And um, honestly, really cool to a uh, look and see a little bit deeper. There's even a really crazy... Um, Real crazy duet between Ice uh, T and a uh, and Perry Farrell. I don't understand. They could never pull off this duet, and I'm not even going to tell you what it is because I want you to tune into it. I'll just hint that it's a, a Sly and the Family Stone song, but uh, interesting, 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 interesting to see a big tour like this be put together. Um, it's interesting to see even a small tour be put together i'm hoping soon to be able to get a little bit more backstage to hear a little bit more on how maybe a tour is put together that seems to be something that would be very 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 exciting um you know out there to to hear a little bit more of of why what goes into putting a tour together what goes into um having a a a, a positive tour like you know what, what what what's happening and especially one like Lollapalooza, which is just huge. I mean, so many moving pieces. You'll see one thing I will give away is that at one show, the very first one, Nine Inch Nails, had like a tape machine going and it messed up and it made them not sound the best and they were upset. But you know what? They still stuck through it and they pounded through that that whole entire uh, tour. And you know what? They uh, they did a very, very, very um, good job at at keeping it up where it is now. You know, that's something to, uh, for a conversation at another time. Um, you know, but looking as we, at some of the artists, it, it's come a long way from what that first episode, I mean, uh, Todd, the creator and future X Metro Boomin, Stray kids, Melanie Martinez, Skrillex, a lot different than the artists that were on that first bill. And, you know, um, I know things change, times change, um, you know, uh, the killers, they are there quite a lot at the old Lollapalooza. They like those killers at the Lollapalooza. You know, killers are okay. I like a couple of their songs. Um, I know there are a lot of fans out there of the killers. Um, there's a lot of fans of a lot of bands that will be coming to town. Um, you know, and we are here in Chicago and we're here um, near Chicago. So if you're 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 around the area and you're looking for you know something something cool to see is there's always going to be really good stuff. Even they might be giants is playing June 19th. I know my main man Brian out there likes they might be giants. The great great band there. Um, Modest Mouse Pixies Cat Power. Okay, June 19th, same day. Where do you go, Modest Mouse? Where do you go? They might be giants. I wish you could fit them both in. They all should be playing at the same place. Great bands all together. Uh, can you imagine that? Pixies. They might be Giants and Modest Mouse all in one place. That's what we try to bring here. Everything in one place. We've talked about Sleep Token, Isley Brothers. We've talked about the new Cage the Elephant. 
Um, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for, for coming together this Wednesday and talking tunes with Tone, Tony, the sugar baggie. Um, again, look out for all the good stuff that we got going on here on the channel. We have uh, last night a really awesome draft where we drafted uh, Marvel characters in wrestling roles. Uh, I'm sorry, wrestlers in Marvel roles. There you go. See, look at that. Um, you so like we picked someone like Drew McIntyre, and we made him. You know, uh, tune in and see. I don't even want to give that one away because that's how good it is. Um, tune into this Sunday. We're gonna have a, a new at the show. We're gonna be digging into Beverly Hills Cop. The heat is bomb bomb on great soundtrack. Great soundtrack to that movie. Tune in to see what other soundtrack I'm gonna be talking about. I've been working down in my lab. Um, check out all the awesome also blogs and other cool stuff that is dropping. Check out that VHS. Check out that um, everything. Album cuts. Whatever you can find. Check it out. Hit like and subscribe. We got a lot of cool new merchandise too. Check that out. We got a really awesome Steve Stone hand painted shirt. You really got to check out. We got a uh, at the show show. It's not... It's our movies. Check them all out, man. But uh, until next week, everybody, I want to thank everybody for, again for joining me. And, uh, well, we find ourselves always in the same spot, and we will continue to find our same spot, rocking and rolling. So see you all next week, everybody. Take care.